you should be most welcome to Jiminism Total Nutter Shell. Today we're back into From Depth and we will do some uh, tests against a real shonky bit of armor with Cram. And uh, this is what I think most people would agree is uh, a Doom Cram capable system. This thing is huge and uh, even though we have uh, I think we have like max max the caliber on it it has like six seconds uh, reload speed and of course we can crank up some um, payload packers on there uh, payload compactors I mean and we could transform this system into something really nasty like a doom cram right now it's just a pretty fast big cram so anyways let us discover the ins and out of the cram because I did a test with the cram shells before but it was with a too small cram system and well since then cram has changed quite a lot so well here we are before we continue with our little test of the cram as well as uh, armor I want to test a little thing here like basically how dangerous are these different type of pellets because I did a test before and maybe it changed. So we shoot a little bit on the harder and they just melt. Okay, let's shoot at the EMP. And they seem to also just melt. Alright, how about the frag? Really? Huh. No damage? It actually seems that the pellets do not respond like they uh, used to do. You can see we just blew a hole here and there is like no type of chain reaction. It's just the initial like explosion. So it seems that they really made the cram systems a lot less volatile than they were before, which is pretty interesting to see. But uh, all right, now we have uh, tested that. So uh, let's get into checking this little system out. So I set up a smart little system. When I click T, uh, the cannon will fire in this angle, thanks to advanced control blocks. So anyways, here we have my big chunk of armor. It's two meters of metal, <clears throat> which is a great like outer layer sheep general armor we get to armor bonus stacking so if we kind of check with let's see here block hp tool which is unfortunately like overlaid with a new type of uh, ui <clears throat> a little bit we can see the armor class is uh, 48 so we get the bonus from the one behind it so if we kind of look here at metal so armor class max structure armor boost plus eight so they have different like plus values <clears throat> if we would back it with wood it would only be plus 16 1.6 uh, stone 3 and of course heavy armor would be plus 12 so actually like the backing of uh, one layer of metal it's not much worse than heavy armor but anyways two layers of armor is great <clears throat> and for stuff penetrating that it's uh, nice to have some applique panels to uh, stop really uh, you know shells with uh, a lot of armor piercing since it has 15 armor still being sheep it also works as some kind of spall liner but of course um here we not spall liner it activates like heat and hash shells inside of here um but so not spore liner sorry it's um it just uh, acts as an air gap activating <clears throat> hash and heat shells and stuff like that but of course this is not an issue with a cram cannon but anyways we have a layer there because it's common backed by a layer of metal to add some structure support and of course we have that on top of a layer of heavy armor because you know heavy armor is always nice um especially backing metal so we get really strong sheet of metal in front of it then we have uh, wooden poles they kind of almost act uh, they basically act as air gaps as well from most angle except straight in front of it 
uh, but uh, it's a HP, uh, HP soak layer and better than just uh, thin air. Then we have another sheet of metal and then we have a wood metal beam um, composite layer uh, which according to Jonas calculations the winner of uh, our ground vehicle tournament uh, he's done some calculations uh, about you know the best type of armor and it seems that <coughs> well the wood and metal composite should actually be the best um, kinetic and armor stopping layer for the buck so I have a thick layer of that, like four layer, should be good enough. And then an actual air gap and a layer of stone to kind of symbolize uh, internal um, armoring, because uh, stone is great for interior armor. And I actually think we will add a layer of like AI connections, uh, AI physical connectors here, like this block, to kind of symbolize interior squishy parts. So there we go. So let us save this vehicle. And we should go in here, make sure we have no fuse. We should go in here and uh, check this little cannon out. What is this type of cannon? <clears throat> well, it's a 2,000 two millimeter cannon. It's pretty big. And we have a mixed loadout. But we will go and set this to harden our pellet. And just apply that to cannon. And we could make it really strong with the payload uh, compactors. But uh, for this time, we will have a normal hardener pellet uh, 100 percent 2000 millimeter and we will see what type of damage this will do so there we go straight through two layers of metal and a plick panel and the other sheet of metal and we even damaged the heavy armor pretty interesting so uh, let us actually slow down time a little bit and fire another shell. Ooh, and here we can see the hardener pellet went through the heavy armor, that block, and into our, uh, yeah, basically soaking layer. Well, don't wanna wait for reload speed like that. I guess we'll continue. And there we go. Oh, and it went straight through. So, well, not sure. And that's like uh, one, two, three. I guess it went through by three then. Let's just uh, try this again. And we should just one. To see if we get the same results, kind of two and three. Oh yes, <clears throat> pretty consistent. Well, this is some really like heavy armor. Of course, this shell would go <clears throat> through most targets at point blank. To be honest, I'm like, but uh, there we have the kind of damage to penetrate through this. We need to give it three shots. And, uh, of course, we could only do it with one shot. By going into here, configure la loadout and add some payload compactors. And, of course, um, this changes a lot of uh, the hardware pellets to these payload compactors, the old ammo box. And uh, our reload speed just went from 6 seconds to 23 seconds and I want to slow down time for this one. If this won't go through entirely on the one shot, I'm very disappointed. Bam! Oh yeah, straight through, no problem. Well, no surprises there. Um, as I said, like this system is definitely a very formidable, like, doom 
cram kind of setup. Like if we look at the stats, what would this even cost? Like only 89,000? Well, I thought it was to be more expensive, but it's a huge cannon anyways. Uh, let's continue with our little tradition here <laughs> and uh, test this for like pure EMP just for uh, fun. Uh, I don't think this would do like much damage. Oh, we need to repair this thing first. There we go. <clears throat> right. And of course it, oh, it led through the metal and it deleted a chunk of heavy armor here. Oh, it penetrated th straight through and deleted this slab of... Uh, hmm. I'm a little bit curious. What if we put this up to like a pretty heavy compactor weight? So EMP cannon with a reload cycle of 40 seconds. I want to see this thing. Oh, it needs to pack a lot. Maybe I can do pull and play. No, I still have to wait. <laughs> okay. No, repair all. Okay. Well. Okay, you finally reloaded. Let's see what this does. Oh, lords. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a big EMP surge. Gotta admit. That would be pretty efficient, like. Yeah, that could, like, delete some big chunk of heavy armor, to be honest. Pretty cool. Okay, I just added these funny chains here, because they should not be damaged by the EMP, and maybe we can hold it together. So, for this shot, I think we need to slow down time, and do the next EMP blast. That's a big explosion. Damn. I thought to put this a little bit uh, away from, like, uh, the main structure just to be able to actually see damage like taking place but it seems that the smoke cloud is a little too close still but uh, let's see here the EMP has uh, still eaten away the connection struts yeah so that's kind of the like closest area they got into. Damn, it just wanders back and forth and just deletes everything. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm definitely going to experiment with some really dangerous like maybe have some cram EMP artillery uh, against some maybe late game targets. But, um, yeah, for like the most part, this is of course not something we probably need to use in. But uh, it was interesting to check it out anyways. Alright, so doing that, let us try the next setup. Let's go with a pure frag. So now we applied pure frag, we're back at normal reload speed of 6 seconds. So let us fire this thing. What? Okay, right. On two. It leads a bigger chunk for sure, but it's nowhere near as like dangerous as the uh, hardener only to be honest that's for sure and let's try a slow motion shot oh okay maybe this actually we got through there on several points and, and since it's so strong it uh, actually does some good damage hmm. well 
let's speed up time to normal and <clears throat> we can go and just try to add a couple of uh, payload compactors <clears throat> now with a reload speed of uh, 17 seconds repair all what would this do are we oh shell is incoming oh, also keeping this at slower speed <clears throat> will give us uh, a better chance to see the damage take place but did it actually do much more damage? Oh no. I think it glitched. No, what? Why? It's weird. Like sometimes it glitches a little bit, it's so hard to know. So if we repair it and see if we can fire it again. Alright then. And this time, oh god, that's a completely different damage pattern. Wow, this is efficient. Yeah, 2000 millimeter full crap. Is this like seriously? That's a powerful shell. <clears throat> Only frag and some compactors. Well, we need to repair this and see if we can replicate this, but in slower speeds. Okay. We could. It does a lot of damage. Hmm. So. What if we do try and speed this up again, of course. We can play around with the angles for the frag as well. And if you didn't notice, like this isn't a tutorial, this is a testing video again, <clears throat> which I think you know from the title, but it seems that many people kind of like to be along for these types of tests. So fragmentation angle 180 and fast shot. So this is of course dangerous for us as well. Um, it's basically a sphere, but when we get into like the um, armor here, we should be able to do some tremendous damage. But of course, I think I did a, a flak cram with 180 like frag shells, pretty efficient. Of course this is not the right application. Maybe it will be with uh, the right combination of the hardeners. Alright, so one more. Yeah, now, now we're starting to deal some like serious damage of course, but Compared to a couple of payload compactors, um, it's much less efficient. Yeah, not like anti-air, sure, but <clears throat> this thing, no. So what if we have the fragmentation angle at one degree instead? Well, let's try that. So it's similar to a hardener pellet shot. It's very similar. And then it went straight through and spawned some frags. Huh. So one angle frag <clears throat> would actually be comparable to uh, just a hardener pellet, probably then. I just want to 
test some shots in slow motion. Okay. And now we are down at slow motion speeds. Just see if we can see if we can see some of the details here. Bam. Uh, it does spawn frags kind of, but interesting. Well, now we know that. Let's try for like a more narrow angle, like 20 degrees or something. I guess more sensible. Oh! That's pretty efficient. 20 degrees. The frag get through on two shots. This is better than only hardeners. I guess they kind of explode on impact. We can see if we can combine this with some uh, uh, hardeners and stuff like that and some fuses as well. Now I'm a little bit curious. If we say this cram, what about like 45? It's like uh, feels like a nice number, but I don't know. To well, nowhere near. We got through the heavy armor layer on the second shot, though. But oh, and it got through on the third. No, it's actually not through. Our uh, soaking layer was able to take it, but now a lot of it got destroyed. Okay. So, um, seems that a narrow cram setting seems to be pretty nice. What about like five degrees? So we're a little bit back to the kind of ordinary similarities. Oh, it got through on two shots. Yeah. I think, what about something more like 10%? No, 10 degrees, I mean. Big difference. There we go. Fire. Go through the heavy armor on the first shot. And big damage inside. Okay, 10 degree frag is pretty nice. And... Uh, <clears throat> If we add some payload compactors to this, I think we can do some crazy amounts of damage. Alright. So, if we add just a tiny little bit of payload compactors, something like this, we now have a reload speed of 10 seconds, so not the double, but almost. Let's try this thing. Oh, wow. That's great. So we can do this damage on the first shot. Just 10 seconds. Of course this is a, a big chunky bit of cram, but... Wow. <laughs> Alright, it does pay off to do some testing. Or <laughs> for you to watch my testing. Now we know. Adding a couple of payload compactors and... Uh, you know, 2,460 frags will do its uh, due damage. How many is it without the payload compactors? Oh, I just misread. It's the... Yeah, never mind. I need to check for those stats inside of here, I think. Do -do 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 -do. <clears throat> Projectile health. <clears throat> Stuff like that. Anyways, the moment I have... Uh, been dreading. Uh, let us go with only explosive. High explosive. Apply to cannon. There we go. Wow. <laughs> okay, our two layer of armor really hold up well against this thing. 
is just 2000mm high explosive only. Wow! I thought it would be more efficient to be honest, I thought it would f shred the first layer. But, uh, well, good armor is the best defense against explosive. Oh, let's fire again. Second shot. Wow. Yeah, this armor, this first layer arm is great against the explosives here. Even though we have such a big charge, I mean, we could get through this with frag on one shot. It had no chance, but here it's like already two, three shots. The high explosive just, yeah, it got uh, smashed against that plick. Another one, and it's starting to get... I didn't expect the high explosive to, to be the worst thing against this, actually. I didn't expect it. But, um, good we do some tests. Alright, I tend to do only high explosive when I don't know what to do. Um, for like smaller systems, but that's only good against wood, uh, clearly. Any type of armor, only high explosive, even though we have 2000 millimeters, it's not doing much. Well, <clears throat> I already know that armor is the best defense against explosives, but didn't think it was going to be this inefficient. We finally got through the heavy armor, <clears throat> and now we should be able to do some damage. Like that. Mm -hmm. We're soaking through the kinetic layer. <clears throat> and well, it's designed to soak up and be HP sponge and armor combined, so it does a great job. But now we are through and through on, of course, the explosives deal the most damage inside of here. Not surprising, but I'm surprised how long it took to get through. I usually throw in some hardeners there as well, you know, just because, but... It's supposed to be good, but it seems that it's really necessary, actually. So, let us add some more. So now we have a reload time of 40 seconds. Great. Alright. God, this is taking time to load. Alright, loaded and clear. The shell is packed. So let's fire. 40 seconds of reload. <laughs> well, I mean, the armor stopped it, but uh, that's some good damage. Seems you have to be pretty uh, OP with like the charging to be able to get through. Great damage, but uh, 40 seconds? I don't think so. If we just go back here and we just go with frag. And like, doo -doo 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 -doo. where is it now? I need to apply a frag. Then we have the angle, like 10, cool. And here we can fire. Come on now. I think it has some payload compactors left. Thank you. Of course it does great damage, but no. Wait. Oh right, never mind. We had to have some payload compactors, right? I forgot. Alright. How much is the reload speed now? Eight seconds. Can we get this to melt through on eight seconds? Oh wow, we can indeed. It doesn't require many payload compactors. It's like only changing the reload speed from 6 seconds to 8 seconds and we can get through on one shot. Like... wonder if we can kind of change it to like even less. 
So just having some so seven seconds, one second more. Man. Like, I never understood how important it was to have some payload compactors, just only a few of them. And we barely affect reload speed, and we can get through on one shot instead of two. Like, uh, this shell would melt through most crafts. So, it's pretty powerful. I guess if it has lots of iron gaps, but I think most crafts will just melt straight through it. It's pretty powerful. Well, I guess we should start playing around with some combo shots here. So, of course, uh, a classic is having high explosive corner pellet weight. So, what about this thing? Well, it uh, completely dies on the armor. So, maybe less high explosive. Not doing much. <laughs> A tiny bit of uh, payload compactors, and I think we'll do the trick. We we'll just prepare it. Hmm. Possible also we should and diffuse. So, uh, how about inertial? That's a good all around. It will, of course, decrease the like shell health if we go into stats. We can see that projectile health is three thousand six hundred and eighty. If we do not have a fuse, it is 4,000 and 100 almost. Okay. Well, maybe about penetration depth, so maybe 4 meters. Oh, that's decent. I think we need to repair this thing. What's the reload speed of this thing? It's uh, seven seconds. Okay. Right, so it seems that diffuse is really important. If we go back here and do not have a penetration depth, depth fuse, you can see it just explodes on the surface despite us uh, having uh, armor piercing capabilities. So if we have explode on angle change, let's see if we can reap the benefits. We cannot, so the shell does change its angle and that makes it to explode. So, penetration depth is just superior. Like, um, the angle change thing is great uh, since it does explode instead of bounce off armor and shields. But it really seems that, in general, if you have high penetration capabilities, it's better to go with a penetration depth fuse um, because, well, we just don't use our hardeners um, if we use the angle change one. And the angle change uh, fuse, or inertial, is of course better if you have problems with cram shells uh, bouncing off targets and you kind of need them to explode, especially on shields. But in this application, when you have a lot of penetration capabilities with 2000 millimeters, it seems that pen depth is much better. So, if we go back here, we can see, well, we penetrated the armor and then we explode. So it's 4 meter, 1, 2, 3, 4-ish there. Uh, for this specific application, it would be even better if it's like 
Say it's on like 16. What would happen then? Would it explode where? It did actually manage to go through here. It's of course not 16. But if I say this to like 30, will we see any change, I wonder? Not really. So, um, when it doesn't penetrate any further, it does explode anyways. So, that's good to know. So if we fire another one, of course, well, it doesn't explode. Since it goes through four. So maybe have it to something sensible like, I don't know, H is good. Because on the first shell, we detonate the explosion inside the armor. And the second shell coming on here, oh, oh no. <laughs> Well, it wasn't 8 meters, but uh, if it was a craft inside of there, it uh, it would have had some real trouble. So maybe 5 instead. Explode inside. Second shell. It goes through. Okay. So what if we say the pen depth to 3, or prematurely detonate it a little bit. Okay, it detonates inside of there. Yeah. This requires some insane tweaking, dependent on what vehicle you are fighting against. Yep, okay. <clears throat> Well, uh, I think that will conclude our testing with armor-piercing high explosive. But of course I want to do one thing more. So let's add some more payload compactors. And let's add the pen depth to like 13. And let us see... Load speed of 16 seconds. Nice. Oh no! It over penetrated and just went through it. That's not good. Okay then. Let's have that 9 there instead. Okay, let's see here. So, 9. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. It should explode somewhere inside here. It should be pretty optimal. And it definitely is. Wow. This would totally shred like most vehicles. Which would kind of detonate this big shell inside of it. It would be pretty efficient. And that's with uh, 1,600 Horners and 500... And <clears throat> 52 high explosive so of course if you're not firing from a huge system block like this death thing uh, the reload speed would be insane but the damage is also insane what about removing the hardeners and just go with uh, high explosive and frag in uh, equal setup what would this do And also, what angle are we firing at? 10%, which is probably what I want. Okay, so... One shot didn't do much, two shots didn't do much either. Now, this is obviously not the best kind of setup here. Doesn't work. So, I think we need a couple of partners here. So it would be interesting to see how what this does. Not much. Do we still have our pen depth? We do. Uh, 
Nope, 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 nope. Maybe max the hardeners and then share equally on the scraps with high explosive and frag. Should probably be better. Maybe not enough hardeners. <clears throat> so, what stats do we have? Total volume for power. See where I can see this kind of values. Maybe they're not actually present here. Probably present on the shell, on the thing itself. Explosive fragments. Oh yeah, eight. Okay, eighteen. 0.9 arm piercing. Cool. So, with a tiny bit of payload compactors, the armor piercing is now 19, is it? Maybe a little lower with these things. And now we are at 20. It should be better. Oh, much better. So we got through on one shot there at least, but uh, not the type of damage I would have expected. I think it's because the frags is uh, not how I wanted them. And here we go, we get some more spread out frag, but less penetration actually. So okay, some of the frags were used to penetrate this thing. That's not optimal. So having all of these uh, types, so high explosive frag and hardener seems to not be like optimal. Let's just <clears throat> actually add some payload compactors. 23 reload speed of 10 seconds. We can have a little bit more. Whoops, no. Nope. Here we go. 12 seconds. <clears throat> okay, let's try again. Oh, wow. Now we're speaking. Yeah, you can definitely combine all of them. You'll just have to have enough kinetic damage to be able to go through um, far enough. Okay, let's go slow motion with this thing. That wasn't slow motion. Okay, let's try again. Can we? Now we're speaking. Okay. Shell comes in. Oh, an explosion right by. Okay, this is kind of the. This might be the optimal shell for this kind of setup. We should, of course, try and remove the explosives from the action here. just use frag so pan depth frag explosion and this has like 180 maybe set them back to like 60 or something and we should be able to basically delete the interior so 13 seconds reload yep this will work oh and by the way I've added this uh, uh, I've added some recoil absorbers and flash suppressors in order to simulate a little bit slower speeds because you'll uh, rarely shoot point blank so this isn't like pure point blank it's a little bit dampened to like simulate a <clears throat> undampened shell from a little bit away <laughs> anyways let's try again I think this does more damage. 
you saw this frag there they just detonated somewhere here and it would basically delete the interior of this thing that's pretty nice so we can simulate some more damage by turning the frag up to 180 again and we can see now they're flying in all the directions and you can see it well Pend up frag is pretty useful but uh, we can also use pure frag a tiny bit of payload compactors and this tiny angle of like 10 I think it might be a, a maybe a new favorite of mine yes tut, tut, tut. oh <laughs> One shot and well, just nine seconds, and we're able to fire again. Wow, I just want to uh, let's see here around where it will hit. So around there, I just want to simulate some angular armor. Maybe like two. So if it would be kind of a hull of a boat or something, a lot of people are kind of using, you know, some free air spaces here. And we'll just have some basic thin protection like that. I want to see if it completely bounces off or not. All right. Oh, it does. <laughs> Too bad. This is the time when inertial would be a better choice. Oh, much better choice, to be honest. Well, that that removed the problem. I'm not sure if pen depth or inertial is actually I mean you could have both but that would weaken the shell considerably so I basically don't recommend anyone to have more than one type of fuse you'll have to choose well let's see if it bounces off again it completely does would have been better maybe if we add a tiny bit of hardeners here or not a tiny, a big chunk of them. We could be able to mitigate this problem. Oh yes, we could. Fantastic, let's try again. So it actually might be uh, sensible to have a couple of uh, hardeners in there, even though we go with a narrow frag, pure frag, because it's uh, a little less likely to uh, get bounced off by this kind of narrow angle of the slope cool well i think that this will be kind of it so i'll just end off here with uh, i forgot to use kind of a tool by the way we can we can actually use this one damage debugging so we can record um projectile and explosion effects so let's try and just go in here and see what it does so we have a high explosive partner high explosive thing with pen depth and well just fire so it does lag a little bit it seems recording this thing but here we have it we have it going through here and the explosion as well now i don't know exactly how to use this thing but i suppose that the green thing is how far we penetrated and yeah uh it's pretty useful i think but uh I just prefer testing stuff 
myself, I guess. Anyways, let us try and make an absolute doom shell here, like pay a lot of payload compactors, some hardeners, um, pretty much many explosives, some good frags, and we just apply this to everything. And we have a like 90 degree big angle. Cool. We slow down time and we enjoy the show. This should be dangerous. Oh, we haven't reloaded yet, have we? Not yet. Takes only a half minute to reload. Fantastic. So let's fire this shell, goes through, and explosion takes a lot of blocks out, and then we have frag flying all over the place. Damn. Well, as you can see, using a couple of payload compactors might always be a good idea, and if you use a lot of them, you can get this kind of doom cram effect. So the entry hole is tiny and the exit hole is basically the entire, this entire shug. You can see the explosion and the frags were enough to take out most of this heavy armor as well. So, you know, the hardness went through here and then we had just explosion, sheer shockwave and frag of course. I think mostly frags took out these ones. Cool. And uh, well, that's some testing, and I hope you did enjoy this little video. So now we tested some good shanks of cram, and uh, I've got my new favorite. <laughs> Tiny bit of payload compactors, lot of frag, narrow angle, and well, I think we'll be able to penetrate pretty, uh, and pen depth of course. Uh, with this kind of setup we would be able to uh, Penetrate some like big ships with our big cannons. Very cool. Well, and with that, I will say thanks a lot for watching. This is your host, Jim with SM, and we're signing out, and we'll be back with another testing video soon. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you soon. Jim with SM, signing out.